Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a PASCO Scientific Model ES9054 B Electrometer. And it is in a, I would call it like new condition really. I don't see any nasty signs of usage to be honest this thing is uh, yeah i found the manual that was quite easy to to find i think it's designed in 1987 and the serial number right here reveals the date so this is from 91 and um, the idea is it can measure input voltage and here's the full scale 3, 10, 30 or 100 volts plus or minus a full scale there's of course a an output here DC voltage also relative to the meter rate, uh, readout so this will also be affected by the setup right here and then it can measure the built-in battery one or two we got two nine volts uh, batteries in here and we can adjust the zero when there's a zero volts input and then there is a very very special super super isolated uh, zero current switch that is connected to the input so the, here it's uh, locking the input to zero volts and here you are now in measurement mode and then you short the input to ground and then you measure so this 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 thing can measure voltages without loading the whatever it is you're measuring the voltage on or from or so something like that there's a an internal uh, series resistor from this to the first field effect transistor and that series resistor is 100 mega ohm but the field effect transistors and the feedback systems uh, using op amps and the way that it's balancing to zero volts that means you can measure input voltages with giga ohms in series with your uh, volt uh, with whatever volts you have and then it should read exactly the same so this is what we want to uh, demonstrate by playing around with this uh, unit for first we need to open and put in some new fresh uh, batteries the first thing I see is high quality. We got brass fittings, so the threads is not going directly into plastic. So that is all cool. So this is a, a high priced product. I found one used on eBay for three hundred and fifteen dollars, and they don't even uh, say it's working or anything like that. I got little marks, corrosion marks here from batteries so we put in two nine volt uh, batteries and the chassis or this just front plate is of course electrically connected to this shield so i bet this is oh the other way obviously because this is where we have the input and the circuit board and all that so here is our 100 mega ohm resistor i bet this wire is not supposed to be touching the input right and then this really really funny special switch and there's even a little capacitor that is something oh look at that so this looks like a little IC, but it is called 3N190. That one is a dual P-channel FET. And that is where all the magic starts. And then, this is of course a balanced amplifier circuit. And it's also amplified using this a normal op amp and then there is a 
reference voltage somewhere. I think it's uh, the TL3431. Uh, so there's a 2.5 volt uh, voltage reference. It's probably that one. And then it is using this voltage as a uh, reference. And then another little transistor here. Uh, this is the one that makes a constant current that goes through this system. And then it amplifies the difference. And the zero adjustment here sets the other input of the amplifier to zero. So when one is the one half you are working with is set to zero, then the other one that is not connected to anything must also be zero for the meter to read nothing. And that is where all the magic is. Then there cannot be any current going into this measurement because everything else here uh, knows this is zero volts. I mean, <laughs> that means you have, you need to have an input of, of course, zero volts. But if you uh, put in some volts here and then you, um, you feed back the measured voltage to the other side and this way creates the same difference, then you again have the same voltage on each side. And then you again, uh, <laughs> you're not using any current. So, I mean, it is a little bit interesting. I think we should try and uh, look at the schematic a little bit later. But first, I think we should try and see uh, if it's working. I think we just need a little bit more close-ups of this 3N190. And we can even see the date code is 91. I think it's really, really beautiful the way they implemented this. And they're, of course, using a little Teflon part right there. And this should be super, super clean. I don't want to... You can't even touch this at all, because if you leave dirty fingerprints, you will ruin how it works. And you can also see... The input here to this uh, switch is also going through uh, little Teflon pins and that is also needed for the super high isolation. I bet this uh, BNC connector is also made using pure Teflon. Here is the schematic of this fantastic unit. Let's start by zooming in at the center of the schematic. We find this a dual P-channel MOSFET. And the, the flying lead to the left is just a little arrow pointing to that pin. Because that pin number 5 doesn't go into the circuit board. It uh, goes to the capacitors and this uh, switch. And then, of course, to the input BNC uh, via a 100 mega ohm series resistor. I think this series resistor is only to limit the peak current into this uh, capacitor. In the upper left, we see this TL431. This is a 2.5 volt uh, reference. This reference voltage goes into uh, the two top left uh, op amps. Those uh, op amps, they are actually a uh, current uh, generator via Q1. The series resistor R6 gives us a voltage drop and that voltage drop is measured and compared with a gain and a voltage reference and this way you have now a constant current going through the MOSFET system. Now at the bottom right we see two other RBAMs. Now they're measuring the voltage difference between the two uh, fed halves and uh, the the first op amp down there in the, the bottom right is actually feeding back that voltage into the gate of the right fed and this way back compensating those two uh, gates the left and the right gates to be at exactly the same potential and now the current is again zero uh, the current difference is now zero. That is why this uh, uh, op amp just measures the two currents and makes them zero. So it's actually back feeding 
a voltage and then measuring how much uh, backfeeding uh, voltage is needed to equalize the difference. And that backfeeding voltage is actually our measurement that goes, of course, to the meter and the output terminals. So why is this a cool, cool way to do it? And that is because now both of the FETs there are the same, the currents there are the same, and that means you have a zero bias measurement. And you are now using a zero current to measure. And I think that is super fascinating, and that is why it was important to talk a little bit about this schematic. So let's try and play a little bit. I put in two fresh 9 volt batteries and there is no readout of battery 1 or 2, but you need to turn it on to see battery 1 is the negative and battery 2 is the positive. So let's take 3 volt for full range and then you, oh, you need to push Maybe you push and hold or you log it. And then you can play with the adjustment for zero. And then and then we plug in. So of course I short this every time I play with the input. So here is a little tiny little pin. Yeah, yeah. See if I go near this one. So now it's actually interesting. So if I take a a um, DC power supply, and here is two volts DC. Ah. <laughs> I can charge this capacitor in there with my two volts, like that. It looks like it's reading a little bit under two volts, but maybe that is just how it is. So what happens if I reverse this? Then I get negative two volts. All right, so it's measuring my input voltage with without using any current so how do i visualize how do i prove this thing is not using anything yeah well let's try and uh, give it a higher voltage so here is a one giga ohm resistor if you i don't know why is this always so annoying one giga ohm okay so let's try something first. This is now the 30 volt range and I have 20 volts. So what if we move this meter so we can see really, really, we want to follow the view of this line as careful as we can. Okay. And then we, it doesn't matter what we do here. This is our 20 volts. I really want to put my 20 volt via this one giga ohm resistor. And here we go. I think we have exactly the same voltage via a one giga ohm resistor. And of course, this is still sensitive here. For the load, I'm loading this one giga ohm impedance, right? But this point here at the other side, I can of course charge this without affecting whatever it is I'm measuring. So here we go. <laughs> A voltmeter with crazy, crazy high input impedance. So, aren't you a little bit impressed? So now we have already proven this meter is working. How about we have ourselves a little bit of playtime playing with this insane meter with ultra high impedance. This is uh, one of those 
fire smoke detectors using a tiny, tiny little piece of radioactive material down there. You can actually see this tiny little shiny part. So this radiate alpha particles, right? So what happens if I just hold this near something? See what's going to happen. Of course it's just going to go and go and go and go. And this proves we got something going on here. We've got some particles that's moving. And if I just continue and continue on and wait, it's just going to go. Maybe I'm not hitting it so much, but. See if I shut. Go back to zero. I find it a little bit fascinating. That there's a, actually a voltage potential detectable by radioactive particles flying out of this thing. And then it stops if I move away, right? I always wanted to see if I'm able to generate electrons, an electron beam from a filament and a voltage potential without having a vacuum. So can I, can I do that? Can I detect there is a current flowing through the air? So my idea is I need to crush this little 6 volt bulb and then use its hot filament. So let's first see. Yes, it is working. So if I crush this filament and just crank up the voltage real slow, having this real close and then have a potential difference on this one to this, will I be able to prove a current pulling up or down the voltage on that one? So here is what I want to try and achieve. I think this is a little filament. And I got two power supplies, one for the filament and one for the anode supply or well it's actually a cathode supply. So I put the put the red one here and then my negative on one side of the filament and then of course the filament. So let's first try and uh, give it 30 volts between the filament and this measurement. I am now in 3 volt full range and I zero this. And it seems like, no, what? Is, is it just me who's touching wires here? It should not be affected by anything, right? So if I try and give it one little volt on filament, maybe I give it two. Maybe I give it three. When will we see the filament start to glow? We want to see the meter, right? Yes, now I can see it's glowing. But see, it's not moving on any. Yes, it is moving. Yep. Did you see what happened when it got hotter and hotter and hotter? It was actually pulling electrons through normal air. <laughs> that is exactly what I wanted to see. How cool is that? And of course my filament melted over when it got a little bit hot. So this experiment was only just a, the first little quarter of a second just to see this move and then it melted over. Oh wait. Okay, okay. So there's nothing more to do right now. With this, it was just a little fun, fun experiment. Anyway, I don't want to say a lot more about this instrument. I think it's really, really cool. And I will definitely keep this and use it for all sorts of cool experiments. Please comment if you can come up with some really cool physics experiments I need to uh, try and test and play with.